Hi, I'm Fernando from the Federal University of Minas Gerais and today we continue talking about lattices. We will see how this notion, lattices I mean, help us to demonstrate that our worklist based algorithms terminate. As we had seen in the class about worklists, a data flow analysis can be represented as a system of equations so that for each constraint we have that this constraint defines a variable, which is typically a set. This set is defined by an equation, so a constraint system is essentially a system of equations. We shall call each of these equations, henceforth, a transfer function. And from now on, we shall assume that these transfer functions range on lattices. They take a lattice element and map it onto another element in the same lattice. So which property must be true about each transfer function and the lattice so that the work list algorithm terminates? The first property is that the transfer functions must be monotone. In a way, they can only add new information. They can never oscillate. Or in other words, if you grow the input, then you grow the output. I'm saying grow, but reduce would work also. A function that only removes information or leave it as it is, is also monotonic. The second property is that the lattice or the semi-lattice must have finite height. In other words, the lattice cannot contain an infinite chain of ordered elements. Notice that a lattice of finite height can still have an infinite number of elements. The height must be finite, though. Can you think about a lattice with an infinite number of elements, but that has finite height? If you cannot, no worries, we shall see a few examples later on. There are a number of properties about monotone transfer functions. I'm listing four here. We can show that they are all equivalent. If you want to find a proof of that, you can check it in the Dragon's book. As an example, can you show that the equations used in liveness analysis are monotone? Try to think about it. We need to demonstrate this property on the bottom. If you want to think about this question, I invite you to stop the video and give the question some thought. What about the equations used in available expressions? Can you show that they are monotone? So let's try to approach our question of termination more formally. Just a bit more formally, I mean. We will demonstrate termination of an algorithm that solves a forward analysis of the must kind. Here's the pseudo code of the algorithm. I think it makes sense to pause for a bit and then take a look into the algorithm. We assume the existence of an entry node in the program's control flow graph. This is like the first node in the CFG. We also assume that every outset of the data flow analysis, except the outset associated with the entry node, is initialized with top. So that's the most of information that we can have in an outset. So again, our constraint system defines the sets, the outsets, and they are all initialized with the greatest amount of information. The outsets cannot grow. Is this clear? Then we get we get into iteration mode. The insets are produced by the application of the meet operator, and the outsets are produced by the transfer functions applied onto the inset. I have two questions now. First, is it clear why we are talking about a forward must analysis? And second, can you show that the values that are taken by the in and outsets can only decrease in this example? The proof is actually by induction, the proof of this second question, I mean. Do you remember how induction works, right? Well, you better do, because we will be talking a lot about induction in this course. So first thing, the base case. We need to show that after the first iteration of our algorithm, the in and out sets that come out of, of that cannot really be greater than the initial sets. This statement is kind of trivial, right? Do you know why? 
Well, the outsets are initialized with top, so they can only go down. And the insets are the meat of the outsets, so they can also only go down. Meat means greatest lower bound, remember? Meat of two elements produces necessarily an element that's no greater than the original elements. And for induction, we assume that the values in the sets have not increased in the last iteration, and we need to show that they don't increase in the current iteration. About the induction step, I'm writing the proof in the figure. I will not read it over, for that's a bit hard to follow by reading like that anyways. But just notice which facts we are assuming. We are assuming that iterations either reduce or don't touch outsets. We are also relying on the fact that the transfer functions are monotone. Anyways, if you want, you can take a more careful look into the proof to make sure that you find out that the out and insets can only decrease, if they change at all, of course. Also, notice that the assumption that our lattice has finite height is essential to ensure termination. In other words, key to our proof is the fact that the out and insets cannot decrease forever. Eventually, they reach bottom. I mean, the bottom of the lattice. If the lattice has infinite height, then we could decrease those sets forever. And so that's not the case. Now, let's try to reason about the complexity of this algorithm, assuming a lattice of height h and a program with b blocks, I mean, b program points. So we will have two times b sets, b insets and b outsets. Notice that in the worst case, the loop at line 4 can iterate h times b times. That's because each out or inset can only change up to h times. After that, the inset will reach bottom and then it cannot change anymore. The loop at line 5 iterates b times. I believe that's kind of obvious, is it? To apply the meet operator, we pick two elements in the lattice, and we need to find the greatest lower bound of that pair. That, in the worst case, means reaching bottom, and it runs in all of h time. So just remember, each in or out set is an element in our lattice. A block can have b predecessors, so we might have to apply meet b times, once per predecessor. I mean, if we have any predecessors, then we can compute the meet of everything with n minus 1 applications of meet. But I guess you got the idea. And then that's it. We have h squared b cubed as the final complexity. But of course, in practice, that's much lower than that. We had discussed that before when we talked about the chaotic iterations. This h2b3 cost is just a theoretical bound on chaotic iterations. Okay, this discussion about complexity closes our uh, discussion on termination. In the next class, we will talk a bit about the notion of a fixed point, which is of fundamental importance to the formalization of termination of data flow analysis.